Professor Karl Heinz Kautz. Thank you very much for introducing me, uh, Chris. As Chris said, I've only been here for seven months, and you ask yourself, how dare he talk about urban livability in the Illawarra <laughs> and in the Gong? <laughs> I dare. <laughs> and I will tell you why. I'm the second last speaker, so I thought I'd give away my big idea in the beginning. My big idea is to improve regional and urban livability, as I said, in the Illawarra and in the Gong, with the help of digital innovations. What are digital innovations? Well, they are not more and not less like novel information systems, which are supported and enabled by digital information technology, which can be realized. And uh, I'm a quick learner. I was at the rehearsal two days ago, and I was so impressed about the free radicals and the props that I thought I also need a prop. <laughs> so these nov novel information systems are supported and enabled, as I said, by digital technology. And they are realized on nothing else than this little device or a tablet computer. Some would make advertisement for a certain company in the US and would it call an iPad. These are the digital, digital innovations I talk about. So uh, I have to disappoint you. Uh, my big idea is actually a very small idea. And if I be more precise, it's a number of small ideas. But I believe that uh, these small ideas are based on a big thought. Namely that, uh, and all the speakers before me have given good examples of this, that the world in which we live can be understood as a system. A word everyone uses but doesn't reflect that much about. More precisely, uh, a countless number of, of systems. And it's, what is a system? Systems are complex wholes. Well, what is a complex whole? A complex whole is something which consists of interconnected uh, parts. The audience, you are a system, and if you take me on, we are another system. But then I will be part of your system. So it's people who define, and that's one of my important points, that people who define what is part of a system and what is not. And on the slides be behind me, you see a, a number of uh, examples of systems. Some would call the planet Earth a system, but if I would ask you what defines the planet Earth as a system for you, I'm pretty sure I would get well, if there are 250 people in the room, you would get two different, 250 different opinions and perspectives of what the planet Earth as a system is. You see the city as a system, and most of you recognize the city. It's my new home city. The nature as a system. Again, a picture of uh, a system which is very close and, uh, to this uh, building. And the steelworks as a system, and it's not just the steelworks. It's the steelworks down the road. And last but not least, and uh, after all that talk about sex and gender, I thought I'd choose a genderless human being as an example of a system. So uh, as you might have uh, found out, I think in systems. And I'm interested in information systems, which are a particular kind of system, systems which are driven by people and which provide information and information-based services to people. Information systems are not just about technical systems. They are socio-technical systems. And they're embedded in human practices. So my first takeaway for you tonight is think in systems, in holes, but don't forget the parts. But as I just indicated, human practices and human perception uh, is based on very complex practices and they have to they are understood differently by different people So how can we identify and bring these different understandings which characterize a complex problem situation out into the open and Make proposals to solve them and to avoid the classic way and I underline that again a classic way into failure Namely to start with information technology and not with people Well what we can do is of course easily easy, and one of uh, the speakers before mentioned it, we can, we can involve and engage the community. And that's what I've done. I've only been here for seven months. You won't believe to well how many people in the gong I've been speaking. Some of you are in this room and didn't know that I was interviewing you while you thought you would buy me a drink. 
So my big small ideas are as much about the result which I will present, the digital innovations, than they're about the way we find them and uh, we develop them. So my ideas are actually your ideas. I'm an idea thief. I came from Europe to steal your ideas. <laughs> but I give them back to you. They are the result of an analysis which are based on uh, community and stakeholder engagement, on your engagement as citizens, as governmental representatives, or as business and industry uh, lobbyists. So my seven second takeaway, if you want to uh, develop digital innovations, engage the community. As I said, this is what I have done. The livability debate is a complex problem situation, and thus it provides a very good example uh, for what I call system thinking. One thing is to engage the community, but we also need an appropriate way to express the problematic situation, and this is to visualize it. Some of my speakers, the speakers before me, were also uh, very interested in uh, visualizing things. My way of visualizing things is to draw a rich picture. It's not animated. But where did I get my rich picture from? As I said, I interviewed and had conversations with citizens in the Gong and the Illawarra. I looked at publicly accessible blogs and Facebook groups, and you would be surprised what you'll find there, what people, meet, what people think about this area, good and bad. I got uh, documents like the community newsletter, which the council uh, produces regularly, the uh, university smart infrastructure facility strategic plan got in my hands. Of course, I would read the Illawarra Mercury regularly. I was in the fortunate uh, position to get a draft of the economic development action plan of the Wulongong City Council. No secrets will be disclosed today. I had the opportunity to study the Property Council of Australia, Illawarra Ospol, from for 2012. Well, and then I was in the really fortunate uh, uh, position to have an interview, well, a conversation with the Lord Mayor. I talked to councillors, to, uh, to council employers. I participated in livability think tanks. I took part in the national broadband workshops. So you can see I engaged. I've only been here seven months. So if you look at the rich picture, which you see again to my left and my right, uh, you see that it depicts parts of the livability debate. We see that people love the gong. Well, people actually put it on their cars that they love the gong. The escarpment and the beaches. Uh, well, some of them actually ask uh, themselves what livability is about. If an academic asks you what do you think about livability in the gong, they look at you and expect that you explain to them what livability is. Some have issues that there is no work, meaning that people have to uh, commute to Sydney. Others think that the shopping, especially in the Crown Street Mall, is appalling. What do they do? They commute to Sydney. Some want long-term plans and hard numbers. Others want change now. Some see business opportunities. Others see just noise and fills. And as English is not my mother tongue, I loved one of the blogs, and I couldn't uh, keep myself from sharing that sentence with you. Some complain that the town is dilapidated. I had never heard that word before, so I had to look it up in a dictionary. <laughs> and it sounds awful in German. <laughs> <laughs> I share it with you uh, later but when we have a drink. But there are, there are other parts of the debate which I have omitted for the sake of simplicity. Uh, but they have been mentioned. Quite a number of people, and now I get serious again, are, of course, uh, 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 very uh, stressed by the threats of asbestos. We just in the head in the city again two buildings which were closed uh, last, last week, which had to be cleared of asbestos, uh, and the lack of limits of uh, cultural offers. Uh, I, have to I have to rush, I have to rush. In any case, if we look at the picture, we can uh, identify uh, many possible systems to solve some of these problems. And what I do as a system thinker, of course, I look what is culturally desirable and which is ec what is economically feasible. And as uh, some of the, uh, those people who are interviewed said to me, well, what I have to do is harvesting the low-hanging fruits. And that's what I did. I actually stole one of her ideas. 
so I can propose at least two systems, two digital innovations, uh, which I think can improve livability in the gong. And one of them is around business, because I understand that's very important in Australia. And I am now in a business school, that's really important. Uh, and the other one is about fill. So what I, what I, that was very fast. That's it. Do I get those 10 seconds back? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what, uh, just to f uh, finish off, so engaging people and uh, producing a rich picture, uh, which I, of course, have not discussed with all these, uh, those involved, which I should have done. Uh, my contribution today is uh, to bring forward the idea of what I call, and uh, I, as I said, I stole that idea, what that was systems thinkers do, a business-based broker. And the other one is an anti-vandalism handler. They are quite easy pieces of uh, information system which can be realized as an app, as we would call it nowadays, and it will contribute uh, if we align it with the necessary human practices. The broker can provide and manage information about available and affordable space in the city, but the entrepreneurs and the landlords, the people have to negotiate the terms, and the city council might uh, need to uh, some new processes to support and approve these negotiations a little bit faster than uh, we are used to. The anti-vandalism handler can support reporting and managing of vandalized areas and objects. You just take a photo, you send it to the city council again, uh, but there then we have hope that there will be people who have the processes in place who can arrange and uh, perform the needed action to clean up swiftly and quickly. So my third takeaway is I only had two small digital innovations for you, which are, when handled with the right human practices, can contribute to regional livability. I'm pretty sure that uh, you can identify much more if I go back to my rich picture. I'm not allowed to. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you.